News. Joining me now, Saul Weisenberg, former deputy independent counsel and a Fox News contributor. Saul, we're going to get to that in a moment, but I first want to address this other issue in your reaction, again, to Hunter's attorney saying that putting President Biden on the stand would cause a, quote, constitutional crisis. What of that? It's an absolute joke and would be considered an absolute joke by any responsible prosecutor. I would have kicked somebody out of my office who said that. Uh, to begin with, have they forgotten that President William Jefferson Clinton testified for the defense in the, in the Whitewater trial? He was a defense witness. He testified at the White House. There was no constitutional crisis. They made accommodations because he was president. So there's no constitutional crisis here. That's number one. Number two, that assumes that Joe Biden would ever really want to testify or whether or not a district judge would uh, allow him uh, to testify, allow the defense to put him on, because there'd have to be a threshold showing of some relevancy. So it's a joke is an argument, and it's a bigger joke if any prosecutor in the Department of Justice took it seriously. Well, at this point, when we see the uh, this evidence that they would not have even asked Hunter for a plea in this case, were it not for these whistleblowers coming forward. Again, w what does this tell you about the just the objective, by any objective measure, what this investigation was really like? It's, it was I was astounded to hear that it's it's the it's like the prosecutors had Stockholm syndrome. Uh, and there there are so many things about this case. This is the thing I want to stress to your viewers. There are so many things about this case within the Department of Justice that are just simply uh, not how it's done. They are not by the book. They are not kosher. And this is just uh, one of them. I could give you several examples. And just the statements alone, the inconsistent statements alone by Weiss since this story broke are, are just appalling. First saying that he did have the authority, then limiting that. And here's the key thing that he has never refuted. He has never in any way refuted or denied that at that meeting on, on May 22nd, uh, sorry, May 7th, 2022 meeting, he told a room full of FBI and IRS criminal agents that he did not have the authority to prosecute Hunter Biden and that authority had been denied by the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office. That is completely inconsistent with him saying that he had ultimate authority and completely inconsistent with everything Merrick Garland said about the case. Well, CNN's Evan Perez um, made a comment about the New York Times reporting on this. Watch. Politics, I think, without a doubt, uh, have been injected into this investigation, and it's been very clear for for a long time. But what the uh, the story that the stories that emerged this weekend uh, clearly uh, show that there were at least some people I involved in this investigation who were ready to 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 end this. Saul, your reaction. Well, the, of, of course, that's true. And the amazing thing, about if by ready to end it means kill it, <laughs> uh, I think that's true. And the amazing thing is the decision had been made uh, by Weiss uh, in 2022, ultimately, and by the department, uh, the, the DOJ tax. Uh, there's enough to indict here, and you can indict here, and then the defense attorney, the Hunter's defense attorneys hear about it and go in and start lobbying, and it's all over. He just rolls them. Really quite stunning. Uh, Bakari Sellers is a former congressman from South Carolina. He was talking about the comparison between what is being alleged against the Biden family and Donald Trump and all the indictments coming forward. Check this out. There is a whole lot of whataboutism when it comes to Hunter Biden. But there is a great deal of difference between the multiple felony counts the president of the United States is looking at versus some activities or actions by this president's son. Yeah, so they're trying to say, well, there's, there's just these rumblings about Biden's son. And meanwhile, we have indictments piling up against Trump that actually allege credible wrongdoing. So <laughs> no, neither, neither. I mean, the other one is up here and the other one's down there. Well, why is why the question is why isn't there an indictment against Hunter Biden? The reason there isn't was because of this political interference. 
And I, I've never been impressed by what about, to me, he's engaging in what aboutism. Every, every case should be judged on its own merits. And uh, let me just tell you, the Hunter Biden investigation is a major black mark and a major on the DOJ, a major scandal in DOJ history. And there should have been, as I said, from the very beginning, there should have been a special counsel. And this is a reason why I'm the only one apparently in America who believes this. They should they should resuscitate the independent counsel statute. You would need real independence in this situation. So uh, this is so wild on so many levels. We have a lot more to ask you, but we're going to bring you back tomorrow. Thanks so much, Saul. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.